Shalom, shalom, peace and blessings. Now let's get straight into it. Now today we're going to talk about hell. All right, what is hell? Shout out to the brother MF that asked about this lesson. So let's go in. Now what is hell this subterranean, meaning this region under the earth, this whole different dimension where the wicked go after death? And there's a devil there with a pitchfork, you know, that's Lord of the underworld. Is that the case? No, it's not. All right. And really, first thing I want to talk about here is whether you're a repentant Israelite or not. You know, we must understand that we could be reading concepts in the scriptures or thinking concepts are in the scriptures that aren't actually there. Okay, and no one is really exempt from that. We saw our forefathers do it all the time, and people still do it now. Whole doctrines are created because people think they see things in the scriptures that really just don't exist. And one example of that is hell. There's many scriptures that you read where you read the word hell, and if you come in with the pretense that, excuse me, you come in with the pretext that, there's this subterranean region, you're going to believe it's there. But when you actually think about it, there was never a hell mentioned, a dimension called hell ever mentioned in the scriptures. Like what day was hell created? When was, the, you know, the, the quote unquote devil, when was he given dominion over this region? All right. Why don't we ever read about that in the scriptures? All right. So let's get some understanding of this. Uh, what hell is. I've done a lesson on this previously, but um, it's private on this page. I went through it. I was going to make it public. I went through it and say, you know what? I just want to go ahead and go over this whole um, concept again, because it's, it's really important to understand this because once you realize that hell is not an actual thing, it's not actually in the scriptures. It also helps you understand um, things that are in the scriptures like judgment. Okay. And also, uh, just lastly here, it, it helps you understand that you have to relearn everything. Okay. If you came from the Christian church, like I did, then you, you have to really program yourself to, um, not accept any Christian ideologies, you know, like you once did, you have to question everything. Because Christian ideologies or Christianity in itself is just watered down paganism. It is paganism. It's just a watered down version where it's made to be more acceptable to the masses of people. But it's really just, you know, all paganism. All right. And yeah, that's, that's pretty much it for now. I'm going to talk more about I'm going to talk more about. Um hell and what this pertains to as we go through this lesson. But let's go ahead and go in. I'm going to start here at Ecclesiastes chapter 2 in verse 14. It says, the wise man's eyes are in his head, but the fool walketh in darkness. And I myself perceived also that one event happened to them all. So for the wise man and the fool, one event happened to them all. And again, once you understand judgment and what that looks like, you would never believe in a hell, meaning when, and when I say hell, because hell is in the scriptures, right? The word hell is in the scriptures. The uh, concept of hell is in the scriptures, but not what they tell you in a quote unquote Christian church. And really, once we get an understanding here, we're going to see that the, uh, the Christian ideology or Really, the world's ideology of hell is found in many different pagan uh, mythologies. OK, so it's not really a Christian mythology at all or Christian ideology is really, you know, all of the other nations. They've always believed in underworld and a God of the underworld. And they've done nothing but, you know, take that concept and try to mend it in with the scriptures when. That's always been the other nation's belief, like in ancient Egypt, you know, in Rome, so on and so forth. But we're going to read that a little bit later on. Let's get to this first. All right. Verse 15. Then said I in my heart, as it happened to the fool, 
So it happened even to me. And why was I then more wise? Then I said in my heart that this also is vanity. For there is no remembrance of the wise more than of the fool forever. Seeing that which now is in the days to come shall be forgotten. And how died the wise man? As the fool. So the wise or the righteous and the fool or the wicked, they both have to die, man. They both have to die. You don't have two separate events happening after you die either. But right now I'm just establishing that, you know, the fool and the wise, they both die equally the same. Okay. It's what happens after judgment. Okay. Not after you die or how you die per se is after judgment. Okay. And you, <laughs> judgment is not right after you die. Everyone is, is judged at the same time. Okay. There is no judgment line like kind of the picture they paint at church. That's not a thing. Okay. You die and you're in this long line. Where is that at in the scriptures? All right, let's get Job chapter 21 and verse 22. Shall any teach the most high knowledge, seeing he judged those that are on, that are high? One died in his full strength, being holy at ease and quiet. His breasts are full of milk, and his bones are moistened with marrow. And another died in the bitterness of his soul, and never eateth with pleasure. They shall lie down alike in the dust, and the worms shall cover them. Okay, so... Again, the righteous and the wicked both have to die like in the dust and warm shall cover them, meaning in the grave. So the righteous and the wicked, they both are brought to hell. Hell, really in the scriptures, at least, you know, one way that the scriptures relates, hell is just the grave. That's it. Just the grave, man. Not this whole new region. Where you go to, and I guess you just transfer to in your physical body. You down there just burning and chopping it up with the devil and other folks that you ran with because they down there in hell too. They <laughs> say how this work. But I was just establishing that really quickly. Now, let's talk more about what happens after you die. Okay, because it's the same thing. Whether you're righteous or wicked, everyone is just away in judgment. Okay, Ecclesiastes chapter 3 and verse 16. And moreover, I saw under the sun the place of judgment, that wickedness was there, in the place of righteousness, that iniquity was there. I said in my heart, the Most High shall judge the righteous and the wicked. Okay, for there is a time there for every purpose and for every work. I said in my heart concerning the state of the sons of men, sons of men, meaning the, the wicked. Okay. Son of the carnal, the son of men, the sons of God would be the righteous that the most high might manifest them and that they might see themselves, see that they themselves are beasts. Why are they liking it to beasts? For that which befalleth the sons of men befalleth beasts. Everyone befalleth them. As the one dieth, so dieth the other. Yea, they have all one breath, so that a man hath no preeminence above a beast, for all is vanity. All go into one place. Why don't they go into hell? And by the way, you don't die and go into heaven either. Okay, we're going to go into that in a second. You don't die and immediately, you know, get this physical body where you just up there kicking it with the most high and where you how a shy. And then judgment come where you got to come back to earth. And, and all of that is just nonsense. Okay. All are of the dust and all turn to dust again. That's what happens. Your physical body goes into the grave. It goes into the dust. It turns into dust again. Okay. It says again, because, you know, 
All human beings were made out of dust. The most high formed the first, you know, men and women that were here on planet earth. All right. Out of the dust. That's why we have some of the same minerals and things that nature that's in the dirt you have in, in man too, as well, because they were formed from the dirt or from the dust. Okay. But that's where you return when you die. All go into one place, not into this, this hell region. All right. The devil down there making jokes and I guess you burn it sometimes you not, or you just sitting there in chains, whatever they be teaching us, man. Verse 21, who knoweth the spirit of man that goeth upward? That's what happens when you die. Your spirit goes up where your body lays in the ground and turns into dust again. That's what the scriptures are telling us. Okay. And the spirit of the beast that goeth downward to the earth. That's why the sons of men were likened it to beasts because the beast, the spirit of the beast does not go upward, you know, for a judgment, awaiting judgment. All right. Once the beast is gone, the beast is gone. All right. That's it. Okay. Can read verse 22, but that's really the point. And the spirit of the beast that go downward to the earth. Also, that's the fate of the wicked is no chance at resurrection. That's what hell is or an everlasting hell is an everlasting grave. Okay, well, you have no chance for repentance. You have no chance to ever live again. That's everlasting punishment. But we're going to get the scriptures to support that. That's why, again, that's why the sons of men um, were likened to the same fate that befalleth beast. Okay. Um, I just want to get this really quick. He Hebrews chapter 12 and verse nine. Furthermore, we have had fathers of our flesh, which corrected us and we gave them reverence. Shall we not much rather be in subjection unto the father of spirits and live? So the most high is the father of spirits, like in Matthew chapter 10, I want to say verse 28, and we had this verse pulled up. We'll go into it where it says the most high can destroy the, the body and soul in hell. The most high only has control of your soul or in this case, your spirit. Okay. So when you die and that's another thing, that's why once you die, you, your body immediately, almost immediately goes cold in it you know, decomposes at a rapid rate because your spirit is leaving your body. Okay. Your spirit is what has your body, you know, at a 98, uh, 98 degrees of temperature is that your body is that flame and fire. All right. Once that spirit is gone, I mean, your, uh, your spirit is that flame and fire. And once it's gone, that's what makes you dead. That's what makes everything else stop moving. It's, it's all spiritual, you know, so-called scientists today and things that natures and, and doctors, they will never, you know, admit that, but you know, that's what it, <laughs> that's what really keeps your body going. All right. But after you die, your spirit goes up to the most high. Okay. It does not, um, you do not immediately go to you know, this hell or heaven. All right. Psalm chapter 90, verse 10. The days of our years are three score years and 10, meaning 70. And if by reason of strength, they be four score years or 80. Yet is their strength labor and sorrow for it is soon cut off and we fly away. Our spirits fly away. Going back to the most high. Okay, you're not in your physical body. All right, it's just your spirit. Your body stays here in the, in a grave on earth. No matter how you you know how you die. Okay? And when I say in the grave, that's not literal because of course you have men that die at sea, but Revelation 20 covers that too as well or however you die. Um you you know the whole concept is your body stays here in the grave. Okay? 
Let's get Ecclesiastes chapter 12 and verse 7. Then shall the dust return to the earth as it was, and the spirit shall return unto the Most High who gave it. See, your spirit returns to the Most High. Okay? And that's for the righteous and the wicked. Now, they're not, the righteous aren't all in the same chambers as the wicked. Every, you know, we're going to talk about the chambers of souls, I believe, here in just a second. But um, everyone's not in the exact same place per se, in the exact same chambers, but everyone does go back up to the Most High because He is the Father of Spirits. You're awaiting judgment. Okay? When you have a shot come back and the dead are resurrected, then you'll have, you know, your body back. Then there's judgment. Let's get John chapter three and verse 13. And no man hath ascended up to heaven, but he that came down from heaven, even a son of man, which is in heaven. So, you know, no one goes up to heaven either. So after you die, you, you know, in the church, they tell you, oh, this person went to heaven and things like that. Well, you really can't say with the most high, you know, has for somebody. Now I know, you know, this could be, if this is new information to you, it could be a shocker because you were told, you know, a loved one, friend, family, whatever the case, you know, is in heaven right now, looking down on you and things like that. Well, it's just not the case in the scriptures and it's okay because, you know, there is a judgment for the righteous and the wicked. It's just not like how they teach you in church. And there is a heaven, but that heaven is going to be in earth, right? Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. So the kingdom of heaven, New Jerusalem, is going to be in earth. All right, let's get second address chapter four and verse 35. Just to get straight to the point, because we could get more of this, but let's get straight to the point. It says, I'm going to highlight this one. It says, did not the souls also of the righteous ask question of these things in their chambers, saying, how long shall I hope on this fashion? When cometh the fruit of the floor of our reward? So if, if the souls of the righteous were, you know, in heaven, why does it say right here, did not the souls of the righteous ask questions of these things in their chambers? Okay. So you have the chambers of souls that, you know, the righteous are in and the righteous, they know the judgment of this place. Okay. They know what's going to go down because they have the scriptures and they're awaiting that. How long should I hope on this fashion? Meaning just being in, you know, in the so the chamber of souls in this fashion without their body. When cometh the fruit of the floor of our reward, meaning the kingdom. Okay. And the revenge on the wicked. All right. The righteous are in the chamber of souls. We're in this right now because they already know how things are going to go down when your house shot comes back. Okay. For more on this, you can read the rest of the chapter, but, um, I do want to keep it because <laughs> this, this lesson here, it involves many different, you know, aspects all at once. So I kind of want to keep it to hell, but yeah, we, I mean, we've talked about this chapter before. Let's get Psalms chapter 116. Now let's talk about you know, the word hell in the scriptures, because I wanted to build the foundation first. So that way, when we see the word hell, we, we start looking at it differently and not this, you know, the subterranean region under the earth. All right. And how does that work anyways? This is like you get transferred down there is under earth, like in the middle or something or all the way under earth. Like, I don't know you like Australia down there with them, or is it like even under that, it's a different planet, different dimension, like how does that work? All right, that's not mentioned. You have the 
the heavens where the most high reside that's that's already mentioned though in the scriptures okay but no hell ever is and we're gonna see that's a similar to for just being brought low too as well but we're about to get it let's get psalm chapter 116 verse 1 i love the most high because he hath heard my voice and my supplications because he hath inclined his ear unto me therefore will i call upon him as long as I live, the sorrows of death can pass me and the pains of hell get hold upon me. I found trouble and sorrow. So it says the sorrows of death can pass me. Well, if this was literal right here, I don't think that King David, you know, which I believe this is described in uh, Psalm chapter 116 the sorrows of death, but whether it is or not, the sorrows of death can pass me. If this is literal, you know, <laughs> you wouldn't be able to write this, right? And the pains of hell get hold upon me. If hell was what they teach you, you know, it is this region where you're being tormented by fire the day and night, which has some credence to it, by the way. It's just not, um, it's just not in this whole separate region, but we're going to see that, you know, there is a hell fire and there is a hell that involves fire. But anyways, just not how the way that they teach it and the pains of hell get hold upon me. If this was talking about the hell that they teach you, you know, that wouldn't make sense really either. Let's keep reading to see what this actually means. Okay. And then we're going to get into the word that's used here in the Hebrew. She old. Okay, it says, Then called I upon the name of the Most High. O Lord, I beseech thee, deliver my soul. Gracious is the Most High and righteous, yea, our power is merciful. The Most High preserveth the simple. Look, check this out. I was brought low and he helped me. This is what the scribe, King David, or the scribe, is referring to here being brought low okay because hell is just either a condition of being brought low all right or the grave which is also just a parabolic way of saying being brought low because the highest you can go is the heavens the lowest you can go is the grave all right so a lot of times you know in the scriptures you see the similitude or you know, this parabolic way of, of being brought low, being likened to hell because hell is just the grave. That's it. Okay. In the simplest form, it's just the grave. All right. Verse seven, return unto thy rest, O my soul, for the most high have dealt bountifully with thee. For thou hast delivered my soul from death. Okay. From the grave, from the pit. My eyes from tears and my feet from falling. All right. So we keep going. That's a, the main point there. Now let's get the Hebrew word that was used in Psalm chapter 116, verse 3. Sheol, H7585. Sheol. You know, it's a pretty common word in the Hebrew that a lot of people are aware of. Sheol. But look, 31 times in the scriptures, it was used just for grave. Hell 31 pit. Okay. Now the outline of biblical usage, it says Sheol, underworld, grave, hell, pit. So when, when we're looking at this concordance um, here in the Blue Letter Bible, really a concordance is not exclusive to the Blue Letter Bible. But when you're looking at a concordance or the definition of the words used in the original Greek, the original Hebrew and Aramaic, you have to understand that sometimes this has a, you know, a Christian pretense to it. So you have to, you know, you still have to read these things with discernment because there is no underworld. OK, outside of just the grave, there is no separate underworld. This is not mentioned in scriptures, but there is a grave, of course. OK, it says the underworld, Sheol, 
the Old Testament designation for the abode of the dead. Now, you know, this is off because there is no Old Testament designation and a New Testament designation. So I guess, you know, at the time of the quote unquote Old Testament, you died and went one place. Now you go to a different place after you die. Just switched up, I guess. OK, the place of no return. <laughs> I mean, I kind of agree there. Without praise of the Most High, wicked sent there for punishment. We're going to see what punishment really is, which is everlasting death. Our righteous not abandoned to it. So this is the word that's used here. Um, Hades, we're going to get into that word later on. Or the world of the dead, as if a subterranean retreat, including accessories and inmates. Grave, hell, pit is inmates. We're going to get into that word too a little bit later on. So if we go here and read this, essentially they add in this Christian doctrine of, of hell. And, and remember when I say Christian, really it didn't, you know, Christianity is a Christianity is a newer concept. Um, but the, the concept of hell with an underworld with a Lord is over it has been around for thousands of years. So when I say Christian ideology, I mean, or a Christian doctrine of hell, really goes back before that but either way you know that's the pretense that they're using here in the definition but again that's not actually in the scriptures okay let's get an example of hell being used as a similitude just for being brought low okay let's get isaiah chapter 14 and let's get verse 9 hell from beneath is moved for thee to meet thee at thy coming, it stirred up the dead for thee, even all the chief ones of the earth. It have raised up from their thrones all the kings of the nations. So hell is beneath, excuse me, hell from beneath is moved for thee to meet thee at thy coming. So hell be moving. Okay, stirred up the dead for thee. Even all the chief ones of the earth. Let's keep going because like I said, hell, you know, it's just a parabolic way or what we call today a figure of speech for being brought low. The condition of being brought low in its many different forms. Being brought low because, you know, you're in a great affliction like Jonah was in chapter two, Jonah chapter two where he said he was in the belly of the beast and that was hell or being out of rulership. That's hell being brought low. Okay. But not <laughs> in actual region. All right. Or underworld verse 10, all they shall speak and say unto thee, are thou also become weak as we are thou become like unto us. Thy pump is brought down to the grave. No, pump is like um, that's the root word of the of the word pompous, like your arrogance. All right, thy pump is brought down to the grave. That's hell. Okay. And the noise of the of thy vials, like that's the instrument, uh, similar to a violin. The vials, thy vials, the warm is spread under thee, and the warms cover thee. When, when do worms cover you in death, in a grave? Okay, that's what hell is. Verse 12, you know, everyone's familiar with this verse. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which, which didst weaken the nations? So when it says here, how art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer? It's not talking about literal heaven here either. In this context, now Lucifer is not the same as Satan, by the way. We're not even going to get into all that because it's a whole different lesson. But just for the sake of this lesson here, you didn't have a Lucifer falling from literal heaven where the most high resides like you just fell uh, boom and you hit the earth and now you're like oh shoot you know let me go make my own 
region down here because I didn't fail out of heaven and survived it somehow. This is referring to because heaven in other contexts in the scripture is referring to rulership. Because that's the highest you can go is rulership. The scriptures are all about rulership. Okay. That's what the ultimate victory is, is, is rulership, eternal rulership. All right, that's what the most high deals with. That's heaven. Okay. And hell is the opposite. Being brought low, being out of rulership. Okay. Down to the grave, down to the pit. Being in a low estate. Okay. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, to the grave, which didst weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend unto heaven. Literal heaven, where the Most High resides? No. I will exalt my throne above the stars of the Most High. I will sit upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. So actually let's get 15. Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell, to the ground. Okay. Not to a separate region. Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell, to the sides of the pit. This is referring to just, again, I, I kind of want to go in on this, but I'm going to leave it alone. This is just referring to this Lucifer being brought all the way down to hell, to the ground, out of rulership, okay? Where he wanted to ascend above the heights of the clouds and be like the most high in rulership or thinking that he is all powerful, but being brought low, taken out of exaltation, Understand that's that's pretty much it there. Um, there ain't no there ain't no hell, man. You know, devil down there burning folks up, but you still can feel it. Somehow you don't disintegrate. The fire is you know not strong enough to take a full body over, or you just keep regenerating or or something like that. Really, when you think about it, you know, being destroyed forever is worth. It is worse than an internal, you know, fire punishment because at least you can feel something and you alive. You have to be alive to feel. But if you have everlasting death, meaning no chance at ever being resurrected again, that's much worse. That's a much worse fate. OK, but again, heavens or the heaven is just a similitude or figure of speech per se. Of being brought up as high as possible being in rulership hell is being brought down low all right out that form of rulership okay let's get matthew chapter 11 and verse 23 and, excuse me in verse 23 and thou capernaum which art exalted into heaven so capernaum a, a whole city is being exalted into heaven you know you have to understand the scriptures, you know, it's a, a parabolic book. It's descriptive. It uses, you know, certain, again, um, quote unquote figures of speech to paint the picture of what it's trying to say in a in its physical sense. OK, it uses, you know, spiritual understandings. It uses, you know, similitudes to help illustrate exactly what is actually happening. So Capernaum, the city, which are, which are exalted into heaven, meaning being exalted high in this sense, not in a, you know, not in the sense of rulership or in a, a good fashion, you know, in a proud fashion, shall be brought down to hell. So this ain't referring to a city being in heaven, brought all the way down to hell. And, and some may say, yeah, I already know that. I know this is. This is, you know, not literal. Well, that's cool and all, but it's not halfway, you know, because because some people will say, OK, I know this is not, you know, literal, but then they'll still believe in hell. 
It can't be halfway not literal. It's all the way not literal. There is no hell either from the sense of being brought down under the ground in this other region. For if the mighty works which have been done in thee had been done in Sodom, it would have remained until this day. But you, again, you see, the point is the similitude of, you know, being exalted into heaven, being brought down to hell. Okay, really quickly, let's grab Job chapter one. And let's go straight to verse six. Now, there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Most High, and Satan came also among them. And the Most High said unto Satan, Whence comest thou? Then Satan answered the Most High and said, From going to and fro in the earth and walking up and down in it. So Satan is here in the earth. The spiritual demon Satan is here in the earth. Okay. Causing men to be deceived. All right. Fulfilling the purpose of, you know, being on the left hand side, the left hand side chief demon that deceives the people into not serving the most high. Those that are meant to be confounded will be confounded. Those are not meant to be confounded will not be confounded by Satan. But the point is, is how can Satan be to and fro on earth if he also down there burning folks, okay? <laughs> Those two things are not happening at the same time. All right, scriptures don't deal with that at all. All right, let's get 1 Peter chapter five and verse eight. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour here on the earth. Okay. As a roaring lion walking about, not, you know, down there, <laughs> you know, punishing people. All right. Got to get that concept. If you still got that belief, you got to, you got to let it go. Ma. You got to let it go What the scriptures deal with and what the world, you know, deals with and what the world thinks is actually in the scriptures or, two completely disparate things more times than not. Okay, now I wanna talk about judgment because again, once you understand judgment, hell becomes very simple to understand what it actually is. And the version of hell that they teach in the world, how that could not be. Let's get 2 Timothy chapter four and verse one. I charge thee before the most high, and the Lord, Yahweh HaMashiach, whom shall judge the quick or the alive and the dead at his appearing. So when he appears and his kingdom after the quote unquote, you know, thousand year uh, rulership. I put that in quotes just because, um, you know, a thousand years in the scriptures is not always exactly a thousand years. But anyways, point is, that's when the judgment is going to happen, not immediately after you die. Okay. Because everyone's going to be judged at the same time. Okay. We ain't special enough to begin, you know, judgments separately like that. Anyways, the, the Lord shall judge the quick and the dead as appeared in his kingdom. Okay, that's when judgment is going to happen. All right, let's get Romans chapter two. And let's, let's start at verse five. But after thy hardness and impenitent, impenitent, excuse me, impenitent heart treasures up unto thyself wrath against the day of wrath and revelation of the righteous judgment of the most high who will render to every man according to his deeds. To them who by patience, continuance and well doing seek for glory and honor, and immortality, eternal life. But unto them that are contentious and do not obey the truth, but obey unrighteousness, indignation and wrath, tribulation and anguish, Upon every soul of that man doeth evil 
of the Jew first and also the Gentile. But glory, honor, and peace to every man that worked for good to the Jew first, also to the Gentile. Um, point here is that, you know, that's going to be judgment or rendered to every man according to his deeds. But exactly when we just read here in 2 Timothy chapter 4, when Yahweh Shah comes back in his kingdom, not individually, okay, after you die, were you sent to heaven or hell? It's not how that goes down. Okay. Second Corinthians chapter five and verse 10. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of the most, excuse me, of Christ. That everyone may receive the things done in his body. According to that he have done, whether it be good or bad. So that's when judgment is. That's the judgment seat of Christ. Okay. Not this separate judgment after you die. Now, let's understand here why you always have fire and hell, you know, pretty much associated with each other. There is a reason for that. Okay. So when I say hell is the grave and, you know, likened to death, likened it to being brought low, that condition of being brought low of affliction. Yeah, that's true, but also you do have hell fire um, and you do have a reason that when there's hell fire or the fire is, you know, mentioned with hell. OK, so that's not a made up concept. That's in the scriptures, too. It's just not like they teach you. OK, let's get Luke chapter 17 and let's start at verse 26. And as it was in the days of Noah, or Noah, so shall it be also in the days of the Son of Man. So that's that. This is the time period right now. Uh, the the days of the Son of Man, just like the days of Noah. And why is that? Verse twenty seven. They did eat. They drank. They married wives. They were given in marriage, until the day that Noah entered into the ark. And the flood came and destroyed them all. Think about it. Everybody eating, drinking, marrying, giving in marriage, kicking it. You know, too busy worrying about pronouns and, you know, if transgender should be able to teach in schools and all this other nonsense. Okay. Likewise, you know, this place is going to be destroyed. All right. Speaking of verse 28, likewise, also, as it was in the days of Lot, they did eat, they drank, they bought, they sold, they planted, they built it. So pretty much they just live in, they being in the sons of men or, you know, everyone in the world, they, they're just all doing their own thing. You know, they're not worried about what's going on in the scriptures. They're not worried about, uh, when, I, when I say in the scriptures and prophecy, they're not worried about the end times. Are getting right with the most high. They just eating, drinking, kicking it, partying. Verse 29. But the same day that Lot went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. Verse 30. Even thus shall it be in the day when the Son of Man is revealed. So you are going to have fire and brimstone raining from heaven. Heaven really meaning from the sky, not from the, the region where the Most High resides. It's kind of one and the same, but in this context at least. But there will be fire and brimstone when Yahweh Shah comes back. That's that first death. Okay, mentioned in Revelation chapter 20. Okay. So let's get Genesis chapter 19 really quickly just to see where um, Yahweh Shai referenced it, you know, references from. Let's get Genesis chapter 19 and verse 24. Then the Most High reigned upon Sodom and upon Gomorrah, brimstone and fire from the Lord out of heaven. And he overthrew those cities and all the plain 
and all the inhabitants of the cities and that which grew upon the ground. Okay, but his wife looked back from behind him and she became a pillar of salt. Of course, we know this is Lot's wife. You know, in Yahweh Shah, what he says, he said, remember Lot's wife. All right. If so, if you look back at this world and you're trying to save it or you want to be a part of it, you're going to be disintegrated just like she was. That's why I believe it means by a pillar of salt, not the salt to taste, but she was turned into brimstone. But either way, um, there will be fire and brimstone rain down from heaven, not to get too deep off into another uh, topic here, but th there will be fire and brimstone. OK. That's going to be the judgment of the wicked. OK, that the righteous will be saved from. All right. So, that you, yeah, there's hell fire, but this is here on earth. All right. This is here on earth. This is not in a separate region. OK, and this is after Yahweh Shah comes back. So this is not going to be, you know, before then. You see, the scriptures very plainly tells you what's going to happen when Yahweh Shah comes back. It's not, you know, or in, it just doesn't fit with the, the concept of hell, what they teach you. And it's very clear. All you, have, all you have to do is just actually read what's here. The coming of the day of the Lord, it says, Second Peter chapter three, verse three, knowing this first, that there shall come in the last days scoffers walking after their own lusts and saying, where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of the creation. For this they willingly are ignorant of that by the word of the most high, the heavens were of old and the earth standing out of the water and in the water. So willingly, you know, are ignorant of just like it, it mentioned here in Luke chapter 17, talking about, you know, the sons of men during the days of Lot. Okay. Now this is talking about the old world or the world before the flood. Whereby the world that then was being overflowed with water perished because the former world was destroyed by water. But now this newer world is going to be destroyed by fire. When I say newer world, not the planet Earth being disintegrated, but the world, I mean, in this rulership, this society is going to be destroyed by fire. OK, say so uh, excuse me, in, in verse seven, it says, but the heavens and the earth, which are now by the same word are kept in store, reserved into fire against the day of judgment and perdition or, or destruction of ungodly men. OK, so this place is reserved into fire against the day of judgment. OK, not separate judgments that you receive because another thing is if hell what they teach you existed that would mean you die if someone was wicked and really that definition that they teach you of what wicked is is not clear but anyways so according to their doctrine the world's doctrine of hell you die you go down you're being tormented if that was true when you have to come back to earth after your Shai comes back and you're resurrected, when you then have to come back, and I guess you, you know, it just don't add up. You know, once you receive your judgment, that's it. You don't receive the judgment of hell and then you got to come back, you know, and deal with that again. Kind of in a sense, you know, <laughs> we're going to talk about that because kind of in a sense, but you're not eternally burned up and then you come back. All right, you are dead or in the grave and then have to come back. But once your judgment is set, your judgment is set. That's why I'm getting that. You don't you're not judged, brought back and, and all that nonsense from being burnt to death oh, over and over again. It says reserving to fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. OK. But beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing. That one day is with the Lord as a thousand years 
and a thousand years is one day. Okay. Um, I'm going to skip down just for the sake of time, verse 10. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night in which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise and elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also and the works that are therein shall be burnt up. So this is literal. There will be fire and brimstone burning up this place, man. That's that lake of fire. Okay. So the lake of fire is just a, you know, a figure of speech or a way of saying there'll be so much fire and destruction that if you were to look at it from, you know, a top view, it would look like a lake of fire. Okay. That's how much fire and brimstone is going to be. But when it says the heavens shall pass away, it's not, not saying the, the literal heavens um, is just going to be destroyed. Again, that's the rulership here on this planet right now. The heavens shall pass away. Okay. Because the wicked or the kings of the earth that are in rulership right now, is going to pass away. It's going to be burnt up. Okay. And destroyed. All right, when the Lord comes back like a thief in the night. All right. Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of persons are ye to be in all holy conversation and godliness, looking for and hasten unto the coming of the day of the Most High, wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for new heavens and a new earth, wherein dwelleth righteousness. Okay. So this place has to be completely destroyed, just like Sodom and Gomorrah was completely destroyed. Okay. And it's going to be in the same fashion. That's why Yahweh said that in Luke chapter 17. Okay. Even thus shall it be in the day when the Son of Man is revealed. All right. So that's going to be your hell fire right there. That's where we see the, the similitude of hell, but it's going to be here on earth. It's not going to be, you know, in a separate region. All right, let's get Isaiah chapter 25 and verse five. Thou shalt bring down the noise of the strangers as the heat in a dry place. Even the heat with the shadow of a cloud, a chariot, the branch of the terrible ones shall be brought low, brought to hell. Okay. From heat, burning heat, fire and brimstone, fervent heat. Okay. Verse six in Isaiah chapter 25. And in this mountain shall the Lord of hosts make unto all people a feast of fat things, a feast of wines on the lees. Okay, meaning a, a, a wine that's been aged. Of fat things full of marrow, of wines on the lees, well refined. And he will destroy in this mountain the face of the covering cast over all people. In the veil that is spread over all nations. So you see, this is going to be the fate of the wicked. All right. Or the fate also just in this first death or first destruction when Yahweh Shah comes back, that's going to be um, the fate of those that are in rulership right now. The branch of the terrible ones shall be brought low. The kings of the earth. Okay. So we're going to get verse eight in a second too. And also another thing to touch on is, you know, it's going to be pretty much the, the people that are in rulership right now, they're going to be a burnt sacrifice. All right. They're going to be a sacrifice pretty much for the righteous to be brought in. Okay. This is Isaiah chapter 34 and man we could start at the top i'm gonna get more directly to it let's get verse four 
and all the hosts of heaven shall be dissolved and the heavens shall be rolled together as a scroll and all their hosts shall fall down as the leaf falleth off from the vine and as the falling fig from the fig tree. For my sword shall be bathed in heaven. Behold, it shall come down upon Adumia, Adumia because the Edomites are in rulership right now and upon the people of my curse to judgment. That's judgment, not, you know, separate judgment individually by everyone in a separate region. Verse six, the sword of the Lord is filled with blood. It is made fat with fatness and with the blood of lambs and goats, with the fat of the kidneys of rams. For the Lord hath a sacrifice in Basra, which is a region in Adumia, or in Edom, excuse me, and a great slaughter in the land of Adumia. Okay, that's going to be when Havashah comes back. It's going to be a great slaughter for the Edomites that are in rulership right now. That ain't me making this up. That's just what the, the scriptures say. It's not me, you know, trying to talk about the so-called white man. <laughs> it's just literally what it says here. And you may say, okay, well, it doesn't say anything about the so-called white man. You're just adding that. Well, who's in rulership right now? That's very clear. It's very clear. One indication of that is when you have a, a nation in rulership, like you do right now with the so-called white man, you're going to see the Messiah figure being painted in the likeness of whoever is in rulership. So for those that say the so-called white man or no, excuse me, those that say Esau is the so-called Arab man, that don't make sense because we'd have an Arab Christ and they were in rulership really behind the scenes. But anyway, uh, verse seven, and the unicorn shall come down with them and the bullocks with the bulls. And their land shall be soaked with blood and their dust made fat with fatness. Like I said, this is going to be a, a sacrifice, man. All right. For it is the day of the Lord's vengeance and the year of recompenses for the controversy of Zion. And the streams thereof shall be turned into pitch and the dust thereof into a brimstone and the land thereof shall become burning pitch. It shall not be quenched night nor day. The smoke thereof shall go up forever from generation to generation. It shall lie waste. None shall pass through it forever and ever. Now, when we read here where it says the smoke thereof shall go up forever, this is not literal and it shall not be quenched night or day. That's just, you know, a similar to or not similar to per se, but a, a figure of speech or um, a parabolic way of saying that the fire is going to be so great. The brimstone, the burning pitch is going to be so great that. It's almost going to be like it's never going to be quenched or it's never going to die down. You had the same description for Sodom and Gomorrah that would, you know, have everlasting burning. But as we know, modern day Sodom and Gomorrah is, is definitely not still on fire right now. Right. Let's get Jude chapter one or just Jude verse seven. Even as Sodom and Gomorrah. And the cities about them in like manner, giving themselves over to fornication and going after strange flesh, are set forth for an example, suffering the vigilance of eternal fire. It's not literal, but it's eternally destroyed because Solomon and Gomorrah is no more. So sometimes you see, you know, eternal fire or eternal punishment, and you may think it's in a literal sense, but it's not. Now, once you understand that too, it just makes sense on what exactly hell is, okay? But we're gonna pick this back up in part two. We'll finish talking about judgment 
and we'll talk about, you know, some of the, the pagan ideologies that we, we spoke about earlier, where hell comes from, um, and just basically finishing up on what hell is in the scriptures. All right.